The unofficial results, Manila, theatrical, Estropod with a favorite, Dancing Brave finishing fourth. Interestingly, Dancing Brave sired by Lee Fard. Lee Fard, also the sire of Dancing Brave. But it was a lesser-known Manila, the upset winner for the $2 million turf race at Santa Anita today. And here they come for home. Manila, Jose Santos in the red cap just pushing, and a wave of the whip, he wins it. Manila takes the Breeders' Cup Turf, a $2 million event. Theatrical second and Estrapod third. A course requires during a race are critical. The racing saddle is tiny in comparison to the English Pleasure Saddle or the bulky Western Saddle. The bridle includes the brow band, nose band, reins, and stainless steel or aluminum bit. Some horses require blinders to eliminate distraction or a shadow roll to prevent the horse from seeing his own shadow as he runs. This trackside moment is brought to you by First Jersey Securities, the nationwide investment firm. Come grow with us. We're back at Santa Anita where Gary Stevens rode theatrical to an excellent second place finish. Did you see that other horse coming? I, well, I could feel him coming. I knew there was something going to be running at me. I figured it would be Dancing Brave, uh, the horse that won the race. Manila has been a horse that's been underestimated all year long, and uh, he just goes to show he's a true champion. The horse did try to dig in, though, in the stretch, though. Yes, he did. Uh, when he came up and hooked me 50 yards from the wire, my horse was bearing down. He was getting his head down. He was trying for everything he was worth. Well, he had a good second. Uh, not such a good race for the favorite dancing brave. Let's go to Brock. Yes, and here's Pat Henry. What is the for you? This is all over the world and England, too. Three-year-old. He did the challenge. Well, the horse raced well up to going past the top turn. And from there on, I wasn't happy. It looked like I was going well, but he was leaning out with me all the way down the back. And then he came on to, in, into the last turn completely on the wrong leg, and he ran out. And, it just stopped him quickly. He just didn't. He didn't handle it. So it wasn't a question of him losing condition. He just didn't handle the track. Well, I felt that the horse looked well, and he went. Well, he was racing nicely till that first turn, and then he, he was gone. You knew theatrical in Europe. Where is Dancing Brave normally at the pro theatrical? Well, normally the theatrical in Manila who beat down the East. They shouldn't beat them, but they have. A disappointing day for you, for Dancing Brave, the end of a brilliant career. Well, he's off the stud now, and he's done well. He's, he's won everything, so you can't take the arc away from him. Thank you very much, Pat Edry. Well, the highs and lows of this game, Jose Santos aboard 2-5 favorite Groovy in the sprint, finishes fourth, and what a ride. He gets pinned on the rail, Chris McCarron, and gets off brilliantly. He, he rode an excellent race, saving ground the whole way, but right here, as you'll notice, he's inside of Estrepart and has to check slightly and alter course to go to the outside for clear running room. And once he got the stick in his left hand here, his horse really responded because the Theatrical appears to be running very strongly at this point, but Manila just outfinished him. Dancing Brave, any excuses? He appeared not to have any excuses. He made a nice run down the backside when Pat asked him to, and he had perfect striking position at the 3-8th pole, but just wasn't able to overcome them. Let's go down to the winner's circle. All right, well, first of all, congratulations to the owner, Mr. Mike Shannon, a native of Shamrock, Texas, who now lives in Kentucky. Nice going. Thank you, sir. I'll tell you, this was a wonderful win for you, a young man who was born in Chile, Jose Santos. You won your first race when you were still a teenager, started riding when you were 14. Tell us about this one today. Well, and I'm very excited now. And, you know, in the last part, in the last quarter, and I'm going a little bit in, in Toro, going out a little bit, and I'm tired, and I'm tired of the hole. But the Toro closed again, and I'm going out. In the last 17 yards, uh, Gary Steven hitting a couple couple times hitting so fast and he hit my hand and I lose my stick and I wore a, a little bit but this is the great horse. Well, it certainly was and you rode him very nicely. Harvey? I just want to take to Leroy Jolly for a second, man who sent genuine wrist to Kentucky. He has to saddle Magambo in the next race. I was psyched out by Dancing Brave but you weren't. Well, American grass racing is pretty good too. Our, our horses that win major races can run with anybody. Well, I got to say one thing. It was a thriller from Manila, and I know you're happy. And I know you want to saddle Magambo back upstairs. Thank you. Jose Santos, the leading money rider in the United States this year, making his move off the rail to guide Manila home in the $2 million turf classic 1960 theatrical second, and Estrapod part of the entry is third. Goodyear Blimp Columbia from Carson, California, audited by Charles Russell and Tom Mattis for their wonderful pictures today over Santa Anita. The wonderful blue sky over Southern California, the San Gabriel Mountains is our backdrop here, and a day of championship races. As a matter of fact, 
Though we've talked about championships all day, we haven't mentioned Manila. The three-year-old, after winning the turf, perhaps nailed down the title as an Eclipse Award winner for champion three-year-old of 1986. Just moments ago, the trophy was presented here at Santa Anita, sponsored by First Jersey Securities and the chairman of First Jersey, Robert Brennan, presenting the trophy to Bradley Michael Shannon. Well, coming up, the piece de resistance this afternoon, the Breeders' Cup Classic. Three million dollars, and look at this. The two top candidates for Horse of the Year, Turkoman and Precisionist, will look each other eye to eye in the starting gate. Turkoman at eight to five and two to one on his rival, Precisionist. Triptyque, the filly, she's made a habit of beating the Colts. Perhaps she can put off 15 to one on the morning line. And another three-year-old, Magambo, in the field, trained by Leroy Jolly. The morning line for the Classic coming up. But our final report on following the foals involves a dramatic turn of events. So far, we've seen a colt and a filly with contrasting lives. The third is another filly who had the brightest prospects of all. Like Lady Secret, a daughter of Secretariat with the looks and pedigree of a champion. Continuing with following the foals, here's Brush Scott. Second by two lengths. Calling July 78, Tadlingua wins the Hollywood Lassie. She's by Wonder Horse Secretariat out of the mare, Crimson Saint. June 85, Pancho Villa wins the Silver Screen. He's Tadlingua's full brother. Lightning strikes twice. Could it happen a third time? Remember, May 20th, 85, a full sister to those two stars struggles to stand at the Tom Gentry Farm in Kentucky. At this stage, she's the ultimate in four-legged promise. An earthquake came in here and just killed everything but this foe, and I had to sell it for survival. That would be, at this point, the only way I would ever think of entering here into the sale. Win, lose, or draw, this filly will be worth a fortune. It doesn't matter. She can outrun a fat man. She will be worth a fortune because uh, her residual value, whether she ever wins a race, will be a couple million dollars as opposed to a colt. A colt has to perform. Throughout that golden summer, we were never further from the earthquake. This was the bluegrass of Kentucky. Life was easy. Even the split with mother at weaning time. But talk of earthquakes had been giving a hostage to fortune. Six days after weaning, our filly was lying dead in the paddock. You just cannot envision this type of tragedy, just like walking in the stall derby morning, say, and find a favorite for the derby dead in the stall. And I had, it was just something totally unaccountable if, if anything like this ever happened. But it did. And clinical, physical proof comes with the autopsy. The acute death and the post-mortem findings were consistent with acute anaphylactic shock. I did find evidence of a previous injection that the foal had been given approximately 10 days to two weeks previous to the time of death. There is a possibility that the foal did develop antibodies to this injection and, and at this time was reacting to these antibodies that were being developed. Every time I go out in the front field where it was, you know, I, it comes flashes across the top of your mind. You know, like walking by a loved one that's buried there in front of you. That's what you think. I, I think anybody that's been in the horse business has experienced tragedy. You have to take the bitter with the sweet. But it's part of the game and life goes on. And uh, it was just very, very sad. Yes, she was a daughter of Secretariat, but she never had her chance. And unfortunately, what we saw in our feature is not that uncommon an occurrence. Despite his size, a horse is essentially a fragile animal. And I think it's a tribute of man's love for the horse that such occurrences are really heartrending. And despite the monetary loss, it's the loss of the individual animal himself that seems to be most important. Well, right now, Sharon Smith is standing by with the really originator of the Breeders' Cup concept, John Gaines. Sharon? Well, Mr. Gaines is not just uh, one of the prime movers behind the Breeders' Cup, but an important thoroughbred breeder, too. In fact, he stands the stallion Leafard. Now, he had a good reason to believe a Leafard colt would win uh, the turf. Well, it was maybe not the one that you expected, but you're still very proud of your stallion, aren't you? Well, we're uh, inordinately proud of this win. Uh, this horse, Manila, has done everything that's ever been asked of him, and uh, he's never come up short. He, I hope next year he'll continue to race, and... Uh, 
he will be the dancing brave of, uh, of next year is, uh, is what my fondest hope is. I think that we have to give uh, Prince Khaled Abdullah and his team uh, tremendous credit for the great sportsmanship and bringing their Arc to Triumph winner over here. It was a very difficult double to, uh, to handle. Uh, I think it took a great sportsman to, uh, uh, to do this, and that's what our r racing is all about. Well, it was a great tribute to the Breeders' Cup as well, and the concept obviously succeeding year after year. Let's go back now to Tom. All right, Sharon. A thoroughbred trainer, winner's circle pictures, champagne, limos, private jets. That may be the image, but the reality is vastly different. At the track before dawn, staying until after the races, the thoroughbred trainer, Harvey Pack, has a profile. The early morning sights and sounds of Barn 58. The sound of an industry turning out its product. It's gotten more business-like in the last five years because of the traveling involved and uh, the type of owners. You get a lot of big investors now and a lot of, a lot of uh, syndicates and uh, brand new people that don't understand the business in and uh, it's changed a lot. While the big stakes winners get all the media attention, it's the care and training of the everyday claimers that provide a barn with the cash flow to be a business. Gary Turkoman is one horse. How many are in your care right now? We've got about 42 right now. 42 horses. 42 horses. A lot of them are maidens. And uh, Turkoman was a maiden once, too. <laughs> what does it cost an owner to keep a horse here? It, it averages right around $1,500 a month. So it's 18,000 for the year. That means he's got to earn about 30, I guess. Just about that. Yeah. It's 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 a game where you better have some money. You better have some. Uh, you would better want to be in it. Coddling horses is an expected part of a trainer's life, but he must also educate the owners and breeders as well. We do okay. We we deal for, with a lot of breeders who have a lot of patience, and I think you have to have when you're dealing with young horses. And you have to develop everything you get. You have to develop yourself. It makes it a little tough trying to beat the Gosdens and the Whittinghams and they get the ready-made horses and it, it makes it a little tough and it makes it tough trying to beat the, the Wayne Lucas with the $500,000 yearling. And when the big stakes winner leaves for greener pastures, the trainer must look for bench strength, a search for winners. You have to go through a lot to get one like him. When they average 50000 a start, it kind of smarts when they leave. <laughs> but uh, we're looking all the time and uh, I've got a half brother to him over there right now. That's one thing about this business. Thank God for tomorrow. Tomorrow may be coming up shortly for Gary Jones. He'll shortly send Turkoman to the post with a $3 million purse at stake. Like everyone else, he's praying for a winner. Uh, I see the fifth race. The fifth race is a tough one. <laughs> I got a winner. <laughs> Current odds here for the $3 million classic. Turkoman at 9 to 5 and Precision is 8 to 5. As Tom said, eyeball to eyeball in that gate. One likes to run from behind Turkoman. The classic confrontation precisionist will be in front. The filly from Great Britain, Triptyque, finished third in the arc. The Dancing Brave is at 8 to 1. Now let's go down to Sharon Smith. Well, Dick, it's been a quiet paddock. These horses, although there are several three-year-olds, are very professional. I watch Turkoman and precisionist walk past. They look absolutely magnificent. The day obviously seems to suit them. It's not too hot. I don't see anybody sweating quite yet, so it looks like we should get a good race. No excuses so far for these horses. They all look marvelous. Dick? It's money. Homework here, and uh, Gary Stevens, a jockey that has been so brilliant and featured here, he's had a close but no cigar day. He really has is the man of the moment here. He's been second in three races. Uh, he was second with Qualify and Palace Music and Theatrical. But none of them were favored. They were all excellent rides. But now Gary Stevens has a chance to come to the winner's circle with Precisionist. And it's a very interesting one-two combination here. The folks at the track, and I'm sure all across the country at the simulcast uh, places, simply can't separate these horses very much. Turkoman from post one with Pat Day. Precisionist with Gary Stevens from post two. Nine to five and eight to five, respectively. And here are two men that are tough to separate, Harvey and Jay. $3 million purse. Boy, it's, it's just mind-boggling to think what the Breeders' Cup in three years has done as far as injecting great new life into the thoroughbred industry. Just being here to see these horses, it's too bad Dancing Brave didn't run. I was psyched out because he won the arc 
but quite honestly, you like to see a horse like Manila get it with Jose. It was a super ride and big deal. I don't have to worry. I'm not betting my own money. Speaking of that, what are the letters OPM mean? OPM is the big deals that you hear about on Wall Street, the big deals at the racetrack. OPM means you're using other people's money. It's the easiest game in the world. And I want to ask you something, Jay. If I had lost everything today, I'm going to come close, but I'm going to walk out with a few sprog just to get a lift to another racetrack. If I had lost everything, would you have loaned me a few? Oh, my friend, I would have taken care of you. You know that. That's one of the things you must remember at the racetrack. If the guy you're with still has money, you ain't broke, baby. You ain't broke. <laughs> well, we've been richly endowed today to have Chris McCarron with us on NBC Sports. Chris, one of the great jockeys in the world, has ridden both favorites, Turco Man and Precisionist, so you have to have some thoughts. I sure do. Uh, the horse you're looking at right now, Turco Man, is an outstanding individual, as is Precisionist. But this horse, they have two completely different styles. Turco Man comes from way, way back, and Precisionist shows a great deal of speed and likes to run on the lead. And that particular style could be hurt by Herat today. Herat has been a hindrance to Precisionist in the past, and if he goes out there and bothers him again today, then it's going to set it up for Turco Man. So Precisionist has to go a little faster that first half, forced by Herat, that could set up the race for Turco Man. That's exactly right. And if Precisionist is able to relax off Herat, then another horse in the race, Hopeful Word, has a little bit of speed. He could be pressing Precisionist from a little bit behind him. So if that's the case, if Precisionist is caught between two other speed horses, then it's definitely going to set it up for How Turco about Man. off the pace? Anyone else there that catches your eye? Well, I tell you what, Nostalgia Star loves this racetrack. He won the Struve at a mile and a quarter last year and uh, he just he comes from way back and he's going to be helped by a fast pace so nostalgia star might be a good long shot play the bugler has called this talented field international field to the track at santa anita three million dollars a million three fifty to the winner and so many horse of the year implications on who is first in this one certainly turkleman and precisionist uh, would go to the head of the class if uh, they won impressively. Here is number one, Turkoman, as a thoroughbred machine that comes from far back, and when he starts closing ground and eating up the competition, he just simply takes your breath away, Pat Day Rise. And Precisionist sends chills up your spine as he thunders to the lead, and then he laughs at his competition and says, come on, catch me if you can. It's been two years since another horse has beaten him at equal weights, and Gary Stevens gets the call to hang on and keep him in front. I have to agree with Dick Girardi, the Philadelphia Daily News. He thinks that it's going to be Precisionist in front by three at the eighth pole, Turkleman flying, and Precisionist hanging on. But these two horses have won the major handicap races this year. They'll look each other in the eye. What a summit conference. Number three is Skywalker, the 1985 Santa Anita Derby winner with Jockey Lafitte, Pinkai Jr. trying for the upset this afternoon. Just behind, that's Skywalker with Lafitte Pinkai. There's Hopeful Word, the four horse. A nice horse who's won six out of eight this season. But I don't think he's in a class with Turkleman and Precision as Pat Valenzuela picked up this map. Number five in the three million dollar Breeders' Cup Classic sponsored by the Mobile Oil Corporation is the English bred who appeared in our three-year-old classic, the Kentucky Derby, and finished second. It's Bold Arrangement who returned to England and the turf and hasn't won a race since. No pony, as you can see, they're actually taking him out with the groom. And here is number six, Alpha Betum. He has the clockers scratching their collective heads after this morning trials. He's working better than any horse on the card, a mile and 136 and one. Spectacular. I have a feeling that trainer John Gosden has Alpha Betum cranked up for the central moment of his racing career right now. I wouldn't be surprised if he hooked up with Precisionist or Turkleman for the drive. Eddie Delahousse urging the five-year-old on. Triptyque is the seven horse. The best mare in Europe. He's, she's beaten the Colts and was third to Dancing Brave in the Ark. Tony Cruz, the top rider from Hong Kong, is here for the Classic. Certainly an international event. Number eight, Iades. The French bred long shot has little to recommend, but you never know. This is horse racing in Cash Asmussen. Fine jockey rides. And number nine, the question mark in here, Harat. A recent wire-to-wire -wire winner of the Maryland Classic. Probably going to go for the lead, Jerry Bailey, who won the Maryland Classic on her rat this afternoon, trained by Jack Van Berg. And Magambo adds some interesting spice to the race. Never been the same since he won the Gotham, beating Groovy and Tasso, but he's back, and Cordero is aboard. That's Magambo. 
And number 11, Nostalgia's star, who Chris told us loves this track. He worked a mile in 138 flat in preparation for today's 10 furlongs. Fernando Toro, the other half of this team. What a race, $3 million, the Breeders' Cup Classic, sponsored by Mobile. And Gary Stevens, as we said, the man of the moment. Can he now come to the winner's circle after finishing second three times? He has precisionist. That's Turco Man right there. A man who knows the thrill of uh, visiting uh, his pride in the winner's circle, Lacombe, a fine three-year-old filly. You won a Del Mar this past yes. summer? Yes, we did. Uh, we were very, very fortunate with her. She's been a wonderful horse for us. It's the first time uh, I'm in partners with four other gentlemen, and uh, that's the first time we've ever had a racehorse, and uh, the thoroughbred, uh, thoroughbred racehorse, and uh, she's been really wonderful for us. It's like uh, watching one of your own children. Yes. Yeah, we're all very excited, you know, to have that kind of action and have it... Uh, that kind of luck has really been very fortunate for us. We have a wonderful trainer in Ron McAnally, and uh, he's made all the decisions for us, and we're real pleased. <laughs> Once yeah. you get in, it's tough to get out. Uh, Let's talk about this race with Horse of the Year implications, although Lady Secret may have stolen all the thunder, Precisionist and Turkoman, or do you like an outsider? Well, I, I, I kind of like that Alpha Beta, and uh, Della is a, a nice... Uh, a good, good jockey. And what is it? No, what is what is big she? overlay? Eighteen uh, yeah. to one on the morning line, and eight uh, eight to one to eighteen to one right now. Could be, but Precisionist is obviously the horse to be. It's going to be a wonderful race. I never ever thought I'd see a, a race where they'd have a three million dollar purse. Did you? Maybe sometime we'll see you down there collecting oh, one. Hope so. Thank for you for being day. with us. Thanks, Robert Wagner. The tension and drama builds at Santa Anita. The three million dollar classic is coming up. Breeders' Cup Classic is brought to you by Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. Mobile One protects your engine better than any conventional motor oil. On a brilliant Saturday afternoon, a crowd estimated at 68,500. The betting handled thus far 9.3 million. The record something over 12 million here at Santa Anita. And now the finale of this rich Breeders' Cup day, the Breeders' Classic for older horses, three and up at the American Classic distance of a mile and a quarter, same as the famed Kentucky Derby. This is racing's 15-round heavyweight bout, the 1,500 meters in the Olympics, five sets for the Wimbledon Championship. A test of speed and endurance, and at the end, requiring the knockout punch. Implications for Horse of the Year honors are very real. Now the one we've waited for, the Classic, the race, $3 million, three-year-olds and up. The Oak Cliff Stables, Skywalker, trained by Mike Whittingham. He won the Mervyn Leroy at Hollywood Park. Is he good enough for these? Probably not, but let's remember, neither was Wild Again and even Proud Truth nobody liked. Bold arrangement, the three-year-old English bred colt is back in America. A fascinating horse. He came here for the Derby. Watch him. Nobody thought he'd have a chance because he was a grass horse. He's going to finish second. Then he went back to Europe and he did nothing over there. So why not try again? Here he is in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Turcoman, the four-year-old by Aladar, winner of four of seven this year. This is an exciting horse to watch. He comes from behind, as he does here in the Marlboro. A win here could make him horse of the year. But this is a one-mile racetrack. He makes a late sweeping move. The track could beat him, but he likes this distance, and he's ready. Another potential horse of the year, Precisionist, the five-year-old bred and owned by Mr. Fred Hooper. An amazing horse. He won the Breeders' Cup Sprint last year. That's remarkable in itself because he did it off a layoff. But now he comes back as one of the favorites in the Breeders' Cup Classic. And good reason to be one of the favorites. Here he is in the Woodward. He's going to win that race. He beats Lady Secret, among others. But the distance, a mile and a quarter today, not his best distance. Can he withstand the late charge of Turkoman? This is his home court. What a matchup. What a race. And we will check first with Ruff Scott. What about bold arrangement, Ruff? Well, I don't really like him. He'll probably win a street now. I prefer <laughs> the other one, Triptyque, uh -huh. the French filly, who's a really good mare. She comes to win the champion stakes. Tends like a soft turf. If she was to take to the dirt, we don't know that she took to it. She's terrific value. She's a real champion. Better than these. Just Harvey like, Always better than these. <laughs> always better than these. Harvey, you're down to $60. Uh, what do I need it for? It's NBC's <laughs> money. Uh, I came in here on Wednesday and Thursday. I didn't think Turco Man could lose. I really love him. The racetrack, the way it's been today, Precision is, is going to have everything his own way. What I'm doing is I'm hedging a little bit, which a guy will always do as he's going down for the last time. Especially I'm betting you. a couple of exactors here. <laughs> I'm putting Turco Man for $10 over Alpha Betum. 
And for five over Magambo, I think he's getting Lasix today. He's been rounding into this race. And I'm doing the same thing with Precisionist on top. $10 over Alpha Betum, five on Magambo. But I'm sticking with the original opinion that just Turco Man can overcome the, the grain of the track, as we call it, and make that sweeping move. 25 win on Turco Man. I'll have five left. There's two more races. Well, I hope you have a big off. win here because our executive producer Mike Weissman said if you couldn't make a little money for us today you wouldn't even be back in Hollywood next year. I'll be hitching home. I always do. All right and I think I'll go with Precisionist. So that's the scene as we get ready for the big one. The official numbers both at eight to five. Turco Man number one and Precisionist two and look two hundred ten thousand dollars bet on each. They're only forty five dollars apart and nearly a half million wagered. That's what you call co-favorites. That's why you you go to the racetrack. It's one of the great matchups I think uh, in my lifetime, and I can't wait to see if one of the other horses are going to throw a monkey wrench into this thing. It's going to be Precisionist winging it, and Turkleman coming from off the pace, and Alpha Betum has a big shot for an upset. Those are the three I box. Lady Secret won so convincingly in the uh, distaff, Dave Johnson, and one of the three mentioned for Horse of the Year here in the United States in 1986, Turco Man and Precisionist. If neither wins, does that clear it for Lady Secret in your mind? I think Turco Man or Precisionist has to win in order to be considered uh, competition here for Lady Secret. Even if, if they do, even if they don't, uh, a Lady Secret is not a shoe in but I would think that Turkle Man and Precisionist, one of them must win in order to be Horse of the Year. Sharon Smith. Well, Dick, you know, as you were watching the post parade, you see the huge Turkle Man. He's more than 17 hands. Precisionist, a big, powerful horse. And then you continue on down to number nine, Herat, who, if he stands 15 hands with, uh, with a hand being four inches measured at the shoulder, uh, that's good. He is a tiny little horse. Now, horsemen traditionally like big horses, but Harad has proven that little horses can run well, as uh, has Lady Secret. She's about the same size as he is, so let's stop this prejudice against little horses and, and look at the little ones as well. Dick? Well, Joe Hernandez, we mentioned earlier the longtime voice of Santa Anita Racetrack used to say, welcome to Santa Anita at the foothill of the majestic San Gabriel Mountains and with a blue California sky overhead and those mountains so close you feel you can reach out and touch them. These great horses enter the starting gate and that long run in front of the main stands. It'll be interesting to see who's first at that clubhouse turn. But there's plenty of room to get position. And there are really three themes here this afternoon. The instant tradition of the Breeders' Cup with only two runnings, many of the horses coming back. Remember that Precisionist won the Breeders' Cup sprint here. And now he's stretching out his speed going 10 furlongs. And we've seen Lady Secret and the rich tradition she's already uh, established. And we have Triptyque, who is one of the European factors here. There's Gary Jones, the trainer of Turtle Man, watching in anticipation. And the subtle changes with the uh, at the top of the jockey ranks. Here we have Gary Stevens and Pat Day riding the two big horses. An interesting thread through the Breeders' Cup this afternoon. The two previous classics were not won by the favorites. Wild again was a big long shot two years ago and Proud Truth the winner last year. Here for the call is Tom Durkin. And they're taking their place for the three million dollar Breeders' Cup Classic. Now getting into line is Bold Arrangement. The European finishing second in the Derby. Since then not much. And Bold Arrangement. Pat Ettery seeks to make amends. Finishing uh, off the board with Dancing Brave in the last race. Alpha Beta moving into line with Eddie Delahousse and Triptyque. The filly, the lone filly in the race, I-80s. And from the outside, uh, Speed Horse, Hirat, he's got some early gas, but will Jerry Bailey put the pedal to the metal? That remains to be seen. Precisionist will certainly be out there quickly early. And Herat goes into line. And Mogambo did not look good in the post parade today. He's usually a real picture on the uh, racetrack, but today uh, he really didn't look uh, like the old Mogambo. And Nostalgia Star with Fernando Toro completing this field of 11. The field in place for the third Breeders' Cup Classic. They're in the gate. And they're up in the Breeders' Cup Classic. I-80s was away slowly. Skywalker comes away for the lead and toward the inside. It's Precisionist, and Herat is out fast. And they pass it the first time. Well off the rail, it is Herat who now takes a short lead. 
Precisionist is close to him now, second on the inside, Skywalker third, and Hopeful Word is fourth. A gap of almost six back to Mogambo. And then another four-length gap to Triptyque. Alpha Betum is in between horses. Turkoman is down on the rail. He's 12 lengths off the lead already. Nostalgia stars wide going into the turn. Bold arrangement is second to last and after the slow start. Hiades trails the field. Around the first turn, the first quarter in 22 and 3 fifth seconds, it's Herat in front. Precision is tucked along the inside. Skywalker is in between horses, hopeful word in hand and four wide. They move to the back stretch now, and Precisionist is moving through on the inside after Herat. Skywalker is right there. Hopeful word just off them, then a gap of three back to Mogambo. Seven length gap back to Alpha Betum. Another seven length gap back to Nostalgia Star. Toward the inside, it is Triptake and Turkoman. Fifteen links off the lead with the half mile to run. 46 flat for the half mile, three quarters and ten and one. And the field moves into the far turn. Skywalker and Herat, precisionist, nowhere to go toward the inside. Hopeful Word is alongside him. Mogambo has moved within three and a half lengths of the lead. Then farther back, Alpha Betum is there on the outside. Toward the inside, it is Nostalgia Star. And Turkoman now, he's put to the whip. But he's ten lengths off the lead of Skywalker, who passes the quarter pole with precisionist in close pursuit and Turkoman is swinging five wide he's picking them up one by one and he's rolling now but they have to catch Skywalker he leads by four with the furlong to the wire Precisionist is second Turkoman closing third Skywalker is still there and then it is Precisionist Turkoman with one late move but it is too late and Skywalker an upset winner with Pinkai aboard to win the third Breeders' Cup Classic and the string of long shots continues. Turkoman was gallant. He was coming from far out of it, but he simply ran out of ground. And Pinkai, the master aboard Skywalker, to win the Pen third Breeders' Cup Classic. Pinkai, indeed, the master. He opened the day's million-dollar racing by winning the juvenile for the Colts aboard Capote, and he finishes in the $3 million race with Skywalker. Mike Winningham, the trainer for Oak Cliff Stables. Luke Skywalker, the hero of Star Wars, was the influence in the naming of Skywalker a four-year-old Kentucky bred. What an interesting race. Skywalker got to the lead over on the backstretch, and I'm sure there will be words between Pinkai and Stevens. It looks like they were boxed up a little too tight going down the backstretch, but coming into the lane, it's Skywalker. And precision is simply nowhere to go early and not enough speed here. Finishing third, Turkoman from the back of the pack and down the stretch they come. Pinkai with a 10 to 1 shot who took the Santa Anita Derby. Turkoman closing in vain. Precision is third, another classic in the classic. And true to form, the outsider winning it unofficially, Skywalker at 10 to 1. Across the line first, followed by the two everyone was watching. Turkoman apparently second and precisionist is third in two minutes and two fifths. One million four hundred fifty thousand dollars. Oh, they'll be skywalking. We've talked often today about the highs and lows in the racing game. A year ago, in the Kentucky Derby, Skywalker injured in Spenda Bucks victory, came back successfully for Mike Whittingham, the son of the Hall of Fame trainer Charlie Whittingham and today Lafitte Pinkai with one of his many brilliant rides gets Skywalker home first at 10 to 1 for the Breeders Classic Championship. Well a man who knows the feeling of victory in that classic Pat Day is with Tom Hammond. You're right Dick he won the first one with Wild again but not so lucky today finishing second on Turkoman made a big run through the stretch but just too much ground to make up. Well Tom you know he uh, he warmed up good today. This is the first time I ever rode him in the afternoon, but uh, anyway, he broke good and run good down under the wire the first time, and then he started backing up and just lost contact with the field. You know, I knuckled on him down the back then, tried to get him back in the race, and there really, there, there just wasn't any response there, and uh, got the three-eighths pole, I, I got serious on him. I went to, I turned my stick up and got the whaling on him, and he come on and run a little bit down the stretch, but it wasn't the kind of run that I know he's capable of, and, and uh, I'd just like to congratulate Mr. Tainer, Mr. Uh, Whittingham, and Mr. Pinkai on their, on their success, but this colt, he really, he really didn't win his race. You know, he didn't run his kind of race today. I'd, I've watched him run a couple of times when Chris was riding him and, and also when Steve rode him in the, in the Marlboro there in, in New York. And th 
those races, uh, he didn't run that race today. All right, Pat, thank you very much. Pat Day, who rode Turkoman this afternoon. Let's go now to Brusca. Yes, and with us now, Patrick Biancone, trainer of Chip Teague, trainer, of course, before all along, who was the horse of the year here, Patrick. European champions haven't done well today. What's been wrong? Uh, you know, past towards the end of the season, and they have a hard season before to come. For my filly, uh, it's only a question, I think, of adaptation of the dirt. We have tried to run on the dirt. She ran well, but not fast enough this time, but we will try to come back with better horses next time. She ran close to Dante Brave in the Art of Triumph. Dante Brave blew out today. Why do you think he did that? Ah, I think perhaps they had a little bit of time. It's a very long flight to come over here, and uh, in place was this quarantine who can uh, disturb a little bit the horses. But uh, bon, we're happy. We cannot win each time we run, and uh, she ran well, and it's perfect. Not each time. Thank you, Patrick Bian Cohn. Back to Dick. Skywalker's upset over Turcoman and Precisionist. Does that mean that the silver bullet, the brilliant filly, Lady Secret, will be horse of the year? Let's go to the owner, Gene Klein. He's with Sharon Smith. Well, Dick, Mr. Klein's a man who has won a race even though he didn't have a horse running here today. Uh, your filly is almost certainly horse of the year, don't you agree? Oh, I, I don't think there's any question. I really didn't believe there was any question before today's races. She had done everything, but with she winning and none of the other two contenders winning, I just don't think there's any question but that lady secret is horse of the year. She may even be horse of the century. Well, congratulations, Mr. Glenn. Let's go to Jay. Tommy. Tom, over here, real quick. We're ready. Oh, what a guy. All right, here we are ready, finally, and an old friend, and I'm so happy for him, Mike Whittingham. My, my. Well, what can I say? I'm still in the days. Well, you know, I talked with you earlier in the week, and you said you thought you had a shot. I think a lot of people may forget that this horse was injured in the Kentucky Derby. You had to be very patient. Yeah, we, we took our time specifically for the Breeders' Cup. That's what, what we, everything we did the whole way up was for this race. And it's, uh, boy, did it pay off. <laughs> we take a look at the replay, Michael, as we get a word from Lafitte Pinkai, who was here at the start of the day and is here now. Lafitte? Well, I tell you, uh, I rode a horse with a lot of confidence today. I, I was very high on him. I knew it would be tough to beat today. Uh, right about here, you know, he, he's very close to the rail, but I, I didn't want to uh, take him out of the rail because he was running nice, running nice, and uh, and I knew right here that I was going to win easy. Win easy? Yes. Well, uh, <laughs> not really, though, but I knew somebody was coming at the end, but I, I was conf uh, confident that he was going to win. Harvey? You're good on this horse. You've been three for three with him the last three times. That's right. Um, we got along good, you know, and uh, I hope the luck continues. Good combination, Lafitte. The owner of the horse, Oak Cliff, Tom Tatum. Tom, I've known one you for several years. One of the, That's what I'm talking about. You never told me you had 4,000 partners. Well, you need 4,000 partners to survive in this business. This is a big one for you. Oh, this is great. This is what it's all about. Is that half of Texas? Uh, a good portion. Good luck to you, Tom. Congratulations. Back to Dick and Dave. Lafitte and Kai with two wins today, earning for his 10%, almost $200,000 Skywalker. The upset winner in the Classic, paying 22 25 80 and 340 followed by Turkoman and Precisionist. The old idea. of the horse, the thrill of the race. This celebration of thoroughbred racing is brought to you by the Breeders' Cup. Back again at Santa Anita where the Breeders' Cup Classic is in the books. The official order of finish, Skywalker pulling the upset with Turkleman second, Precision is third. As you see, the remainder of the order of finish in the $3 million Breeders' Cup Classic with Herat, the early pace setter, fading to last. Just moments ago, the trophy presentation here at Santa Anita. 
with Alan E. Murphy, the chairman of the sponsoring Mobile Corporation, presenting the trophy to Tom Tatham of the Oak Cliff Stable, the owners of Skywalker. Dick Enberg. And with Chris McCarran, a unique experience. We're pleased that you're recovering so well. Should be riding again next spring. What are your thoughts on today? Well, thanks, Dick. Uh, it's a big surprise to me. I was, I was very surprised by the result, but it just goes to show you anything can happen in horse racing. And uh, was there one mount that you wished you'd had today? Yeah, smile. <laughs> or Turkle Man. <laughs> we'll look forward to seeing it back in action soon. Thank you very much. Chris McCarron, let's go down to Jay and Harvey. All right, and Harvey's left with $5, but it was someday. It's not bad. The only regret I have is I should have picked Smile like I told you I would last night. I'm glad for Tom Tatum. We got two more races here at Santa Anita. I got five bucks left. Could get a lot better. And he'll be in action. It was a first-time start for me. It's been a great day of action and ambiance. Dave Johnson. Fun up here, too, and I bet it was a fun day in the booth. Oh, you can't beat fun at the racetrack, uh, Dave. It's uh, a great privilege and lots of fun to call the races, especially on a day like today. But next year, I want a different job. I want to be Harvey Pack's bookie. What was your highlight, though, today? It had to be Lady Secret. She was just uh, absolutely magnificent. You can see the, her power. She had the uh, look of eagles about her when she took the track, and she ran great today. In an afternoon of superlatives, we saw the best filly of our lifetime with Lady Secret. And it's so great that Gene Klein and Lucas are going to run her again next year. That's why we had so many thrills with John Henry, because we got to see him through the, uh, through the years. Right now, let's go to Sharon and Tom. Sharon, we can only echo Dave's comments. It was a great day of racing, a day of upsets, but the horse of the day, the horse of the year, Lady Secret. Well, absolutely. And in addition to Lady Secret, we saw sure or possible Eclipse Award winners in virtually every category. Probably not the steeplechaser, but boy, we saw just about everything else. Well, we did enjoy a day of upsets, and if there was any surprise, it was probably the fact that the Europeans, especially Dancing Brave, did not run as well as we expected. They disappointed, and I think Bruff is uh, trying to figure out what happened. And I wonder if that means that there will be less European participation from now. What about it, Bruff? I hope not. Uh, Tom Sackloff and Ashes sit here, I'm afraid. It is difficult, though. I think the lesson for the Europeans is you can't come and win the Breeders' Cup at the end of a long campaign. You've got to prepare specially for it. But we'll be back next year, I promise you. It's been a great day. Lovely to be here. Back to Dick. The Lady Secret is the big story today, Dave Johnson. And the previous two uh, classics, there were, uh, let's see, five in 84, another five Eclipse Award winners last year. And I wonder how many will win it because of their performance today. Well, one will certainly be Manila, who wrapped up the turf championship. And as a matter of fact, I think he might get some three-year-old uh, votes to be the three-year-old of the year. Manila was just superlative this afternoon. But again, a tip of the hat to Gene Klein and Wayne Lucas. They're my favorite pair since Bartles and James. <laughs> we look ahead to next year. Capote, the two-year-old uh, Colt win, maybe a derby favorite. On the other hand, I hope this doesn't mean, as we look at the winners today and we salute each and every one of them, that the fact that the European horses did not do well, that that'll discourage them from returning to Hollywood Park next year. They'll be back. Indeed, we hope they will be, and we hope you will be as well. Santa Anita Park, a magnificent setting today for the three-third Breeders' Cup. Uh, winner or loser, again, uh, underlines a culmination of another outstanding thoroughbred racing year. We hope you had a winner. Goodbye from all of us from Santa Anita. third running of the Breeders' Cup has been brought to you by Chrysler. At Chrysler, they're thriving to be the best.